Good evening, everybody. It's uh, the, the 19th of February, and we have a very nice tasting lined up again with, uh, with Murg. We've got some international guests who I'll be introducing in just a couple minutes. But before we start, I'll um, do a little bit of advertising for some other tastings coming up. Um, because if I do that at the end of the tasting, nobody will remember. So uh, the next one we have is next week. Uh, we've got the new releases of Asta Morris and Rasta Morris and Asta Morris with Bert Branil, um, with some nice Calvados and cognac and whiskey and rum. So uh, there's a couple spaces left for that. So if you haven't uh, booked your place yet, you can still do that via the website. There will be a tasting in April with uh, Cameron from Cadenheads, uh, where we'll do a um, bit of a lineup of the original collection and some older bottles from my own collection that we'll be tasting with him. And a um, bit later on in the season, uh, it would have been in May, but we had to postpone it until November for reasons. Um, we'll be doing a masterclass of Genever uh, with, the head, with the director of the Genever Museum from Hasselt. Actually, uh, we're going through um, a lineup of different Flemish Genevers and the whole history of this uh, local drink for us that nobody actually knows a bit about. So that'll be in November, should be the 12th normally, but um, it's not announced yet. Uh, you'll see in the newsletter and on the website soon. That was the advertising I needed to do. And now on to the, the fun part, because I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, and I'll start with uh, introducing um, Chilton. He's back, Shilton Almeida, the Shiltonator, as we uh, as we named him. Um, so, uh, and he's back with uh, with a completely new adventure um, from Tel Aviv. Shilton, uh, you are uh, at Milk and Honey Distillery. Welcome. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Yes, I am uh, in uh, not so sunny Tel Aviv today. It was raining, but yeah, I'm from Tel Aviv. Okay. Yeah. Cool. You've been spending a couple of days over there with uh, with your pal uh, Tal next to you. Uh, welcome, Tal. Hello, thank you so much for having us, guys. Uh, yeah. So proud, uh, proud of uh, having Shilton here. Uh, we tried to kick him off to kick his ass back uh, to Scotland, but he, he sticks. Just doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. No, he's here. Just, uh, he's, having fun. he's bitching and having fun. <laughs> I think we've set the atmosphere, what the night will be light, uh, like, guys. Um, uh, I think the first thing we'll need to do is uh, pour ourselves the first dram and then just start talking about what you guys do over there in Tel Aviv and uh, what uh, about the whiskeys we're going to try. So w which is the dram we're going to start with, guys? We are going to start with the classic. Uh... Yeah, I, I see I see that it is in the chat. Uh, the volume of you guys is uh, a bit low. Um, I think everybody needs to put their own volume up a little bit. I've tried it on my own computer. If you put your own volume up, uh, it'll, it'll be better. Um, so, and we'll try to speak up a little bit whenever necessary. But yeah, that's also a good point uh, here. If anybody has any questions, you can just ask them, guys. Just interrupt us and ask your questions. And if you, if you don't want to or want to stay anonymous, just put it in the chat and I'll relay the questions to, uh, to our guests. So. Um, uh, don't uh, don't hold back and just ask your questions whenever you want. Sorry to interrupt, uh, Shilton. That's all right. Can you guys hear me now? Can you hear me? I think it's better. For me, it's better. All right, all right. So, well, uh, good evening, guys. Uh, we are uh, good to be back. Not, not physically in the event room, but I know at some point they will be. We've got the first RAM uh, classic. Let's try to dive into the RAM uh, classic, which is at 46% ABV. The flagship. Some uh, you, you, you need a driving force everything uh, for every journey that you start. This will be the driving force, something which is there right in front of you. Uh, it's a signature of MNH history. Uh, we'll, I, I will, we will tell you about, about the liquid which goes in there. But uh, this, the, this is a brand which is drive. You have, you will see the range today, you will see the differences in all, but this will be the backbone. That's why it will come in first and sticking as a backbone or, a or, or that particular DNA that we want to take in the MNH. Um, so. I, th I think that you get uh, the house style in one drum here. And then, of course, we'll get and we'll see some other, very other different whiskeys. But you get the house style. If you get this whiskey, you get the Tomer, the Matthew Cyril's hand, or 
what we try to, I think, to, to bottle as a very balanced whiskey. So we call it a table whiskey. Um, Thomas thought it's table whiskey. It's a whiskey for everyone. Everyone can relate to it. Um, we call it a table whiskey. The guys in the production uh, and me, because if you put it on the table, it's going to be empty. Uh, if you're watching football, it's going to be halftime. It's going to be empty uh, for us. 46 ABV. Um, I think it's aged around. We don't. It's not a age statement, but we are almost like uh, between three and I think these batches are four year old, mm -hmm. uh, which is a lot in Israel. Um, and again, most of the it, it's a blend of a few uh, a few uh, casks, mostly around eighty percent of ex bourbon casks, which is like for us like the canvas for to a painter, and then we add around fifteen percent to sixteen percent of um, STR cast, you know, STR the shave, toast, and rechar. We are a Jim Swan distillery as well. You know, we developed this uh, cast for Kavalan, uh, for the Vino Barri, for uh, uh, mm -hmm. Solis Syria. So STR red wine cast, and just a drop of virgin oak, because if we use a lot of virgin oak, it's going to be very, very woody and very uh, sometimes overwhelming. So it's just for seasoning. Mm -hmm. So experiment STR and a little bit of virgin oak. Um, cheers. Better now? Oh, yes, that's better, I think. For me, it's a lot louder at, uh, in, uh, at least. So oh, we're just gonna shout. People yeah, the... that's good. Way oh, better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Way Much better. Okay. People good. are saying way better, and also clear ex bourbon with a touch of oak char, vanilla, and stone fruit. So we've got some tasting notes uh, already. So you're saying about much better? Uh, is that the is, the whiskey. is the whiskey getting better, or is it? <laughs> the sound is getting better. <laughs> um, so this is the. Uh, you know, the, our expression of our house style, and then from now on, we're going to build on this foundation. This is our, the foundation of uh, the distillery, which actually won um, best in category. Uh, uh, the distillery, uh, best, uh, the brand innovator. No, that's whiskey. Uh, single well, malt. Yeah, no way uh, statement. No way statement, single malt, uh, world whiskey, best in category uh, oh. two, day, two days ago. Uh, I, uh, I could do whiskey. Yeah, there was a there were a lot of uh, a lot of uh, prizes or awards handed out, right, for you guys. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, got, yeah. yeah we got about five mentions. One of the, the winner for the brand innovator of the year. So uh, and oh. we were, it, it happened yesterday. Uh, but as I, as as we were saying, classic is the signature. I think it's a straightforward, uh, very you know, a table whiskey mm -hmm. to start with. We we can call it as a breakfast whiskey, but uh, whatever whatever we call we want to call it. The, the word quaffable comes up. Very, very, uh, very easy. Very easy going, very easy to drink, I think. At, at 46 ABV. Um, yes. I, yes. Think, I think what keeps you the balance is um, when we distill, we distill uh, the second distillation, we cut very high and very short. So the heart is very high and very short. Uh, we cut between 80 to 70. That's it. All the rest of the tails, because of our fast maturation, our climate, we're going to talk about the climate a little bit later, mm -hmm. but uh, because of our climate, uh, we know that we cannot do a uh, uh, ten year or, or twelve year, maybe, but maybe the casks are going to be empty. Uh, mm -hmm. So we know uh, we know it's going to be a short maturation. So sometimes the, in the paint you got a lot of scents and some oiliness that is not going to get better in four years. They're going to get better in ten years. Uh, so we use less of those. So the, our new make is very very clean and fruity, but we also need some oiliness. And you, if you get the, the upper part of your palate, if you get it mm -hmm. now and try to notice, there's a nice texture and a little bit of oiliness. And this is because of the line arms uh, behind us. We have the two stills. Uh, John is going to show you later on. Uh, and the two stills are going at 45 degrees down. That means almost no reflux. So everything that goes up must mm -hmm. come down and you get some oiliness uh, because of that. So this is the first whiskey. Yeah, it has a, it has a really nice uh, texture in the in the mouth. It's it's very um, it's very noticeable when it's in your mouth, I think, and that's that's really yeah. nice to, uh, to to feel. So it has a. Wim also says good choice on the forty six percent instead of going for forty percent. Uh, that's probably a very conscious choice to do with that forty six percent and not uh, not go lower than that. Every, everything we do is um, <coughs> minimum of forty six because we don't do any shield filtration. No uh, mm -hmm. color additives. We don't need to. Our our whiskeys are uh, they have something. So uh, yeah. <laughs> so and how how old is this one? How is uh, is it like? 
We, we don't we don't say, but because uh, it's the minimum is three years, but most of our costs are all around three, four. So there's no age statement on any of the drums that you guys are going to try today, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, the range is about three years old. Uh, mm -hmm. It's more about uh, you try one and try different uh, styles of it just to have a whiskey for everyone. You will see it and we will see it today about as we go in the journey of all drums uh, mm -hmm. uh, as, as we try. But at the same time, if you guys have the drams free fold, I mean, it is in your glass, the first four drams are different than the last ones. Uh, so it will be good to break it up into two sessions, if you know what I mean. Just make mm -hmm. the four drams as one, which are at 46% ABV, and the other ones go higher on ABV. Yep. So keep yep. those three in one category, the four and the rest uh, are in different. So that will be easy to understand. Uh, mm -hmm. You understand what we are talking about of different flavor profile if you break it up that way. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, just as we try it out and uh, a bit of, as we talk about a bit of brand history, I will uh, like to tell you guys that we have our colleague Jonathan here. Johnny, come and say who is going Johnny. to take us around uh, at the distillery. As you can see, the distillery at the back. So just to give a very, very personalized experience, he's going to take you around and show you uh, the, dis the, the distillery around a bit. Uh, try to make it short, not a long session, but try to make it as short as possible. I kind know of, so that's... Yeah. And, uh, and in the meantime, we can, uh, we can have a dram, of course. Can have a dram, yeah. of course. And he can hear us. So if, he's, if, he got just, uh, if, you, if you don't want to listen to him, uh, we, can tell him <laughs> we can tell him to just stop or... or yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of the room. <laughs> as soon as I see you uh, lighting up, uh, Johnny, I'll, uh, I'll spotlight you so everybody can, uh, can follow. So, uh. No, uh, no, I'll tell you. I'll tell you when. So uh, that, was, that was classic. A bit of the... the as, as we try and... I will say... Try the difference between uh, the classic, if you are good to move on to the next one, mm -hmm. and see, and just try the difference from this to the next one, which is the Elements Red Wine Cask. Uh, just try it on the nose. It is also at 46%, but it has got some element to it. And in the meantime, you try to figure out the differences between two. Uh, we will just tell you some of the brand history of how we started and when. Yeah, so um, I think that... Uh, why don't you pour us a little whiskey now when I'm talking to the mic? Yeah, whiskey. Not this one. <laughs> so this is the Elements uh, Red Wine Cask. Yeah. So yes. um, we started off at uh, 2012, a group of friends that came from the high-tech uh, industry. You know, Israel is a kind of a high-tech nation. And... Uh, they fell in love with whiskey. They blame me for that, but they fell in love with whiskey. And uh, I think I was in this first meeting. It's it kind of resembles, I think, that uh, you know when a few guys are meeting, having too much drink, and then say, "Let's open the best bar in the world," and then yeah. you get up in the morning with a hangover. So okay, no, no, we're not going to do that. Um, so they decided to open a distillery, and um, I remember we drank half of Scotland that night, but uh, we drank a lot. And um, eventually we are here. So first, this, uh, first uh, meeting, and, and I think that the company was established 2012, started constructions here in Tel Aviv in 2014 with uh, the late Dr. Jim Swan. Um, I think Gal, the owner and the founder, you know, is, is the, the biggest, uh, the biggest uh, owner. He um, decided that, okay, if, if I'm going to do that, let's do that right. And he decided to take the best people. So Dr. Jim Swan and Tom Goren, which is uh, our master distiller today. He, he doesn't like him to call us master distiller. Head distiller. Head distiller. Yeah, yeah. Head distiller. I'm too young. I'm too young to be a master. Uh, so, <laughs> um, and then we launched our first whiskey in 2017. It was just a single cask, but it was the first ever Israeli single malt whiskey. And I think the first 100 bottle went sold for like an average of 500 pounds. Which is great. I, I hope it was like that today because uh, we have. A, <laughs> um, and then commercial first commercial release. I guess first of all, the end of 2018, our first export, Holland, and Belgium. Right. Our first commercial release of whiskey, the classic, was uh, at the beginning of 2020, uh, whiskey weekend in Amsterdam. So we actually launched the whiskey before Israel in Holland. And then we launched it in Paris, Hamburg, Munich, and then the world shut down. You know, until now, yeah. you know, 
So it wasn't the best timing. We did uh, we did a little launching of we did some classic and then we launched the rest of the core range, the elements which we are just tasting now. The first one, like that, you know, virtually, and then of course the Apex series, which we you're gonna taste later. Um, so we are established. We we are sitting in Tel Aviv. Uh, behind us, there's something like two thousand casks, something like around that, even more, even more, three thousand, um, and. The capacity is around this year. We are going to bottle something like 240,000 bottles. We also produce gin, but mm -hmm. we produce gin from the same single malt. John is going to show you a little bit around. As well. And um, this whiskey so, yeah. is... Um, the elements the elements released uh, with the cramps, the, what the whole idea of that is, uh, why I made you to compare this two, is that you have the classic, which is a signature style, uh, which is the backbone. And then you have different elements added to it. One of the elements is a red wine cask, and you will see two more elements that is added. The base spirit is still the same, still the classic, but you add 50% of that liquid is another element. Um, it can be anything. This one at the moment is a red wine cask element, which is Israeli red wine, it's, uh, red wine cask uh, sourced here, fell. And we use that element to it. Now it is something which is we have a one gram, which is a classic. What can we do with it? Maybe there is something, some some different flavor profile or different palettes. And I, someone says, I want something sweeter. Someone says, I like a sherry style, which you will see later on. Someone says, I like peaches. So red wine cask is to suit that mood or to suit that palette. That was the idea. And then you add that element to it. And we have the elements classic where we will still, I don't know how many of you guys can, uh, can fill it. But if you can, please mention it in the comments. I will say that we try our best to maintain the DNA. Mm -hmm. Still find the DNA throughout the range, throughout the element series. You still keep that signature m &H in the range, and then you have a difference. So it doesn't, in such a way that the wine cask or the element doesn't take over. No. And, and, and one more thing. We, we are not crazy about very winey whiskey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we want to fill the wine, but not overwhelming, like Shinto said. And uh, I think... I think this is, it was the hardest whiskey for us to produce, but I think it's one of the best we like because it, it's very complex. And yeah. get, you get, if you get the taste, the uh, classic, and then you get this one, you get the depth, the darkness in it, you know, like mm -hmm. dark fruits, and, and, and the finish is almost like, uh, like, like a Cabernet Sauvignon finish or something like that. Uh, yeah. Most of the flasks here are Carignan, by the way, which is a Mediterranean variety. Yeah, uh, great variety. We have around three thousand, four thousand year old uh, wine culture. So a lot of uh, a lot of uh, this, uh, wineries around Israel, and because we are kosher, those wines have to be kosher. So it's not a problem to get kosher, source kosher casks here. Yeah. Um, so I hope you enjoy. Yeah. So uh, one one th a couple of questions I already wanted to ask. Um, is, so the elements is the core range. I uh, I understand, it's, and it's will classic. will will all the elements remain core range? Like, will the red wine cask remain core range, or will you change that up sometimes? We might add another element, mm -hmm. uh, but no, those those three are going to stay. So, classic yeah. and three elements might have another one. They're going to stay, and they're going to stay consistent. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then the other thing is that I I've written that down uh, to ask for sure is uh, you've talked about it being kosher. What does that actually mean for uh, for whiskey or for alcohol? What what is kosher? Uh, we have uh, twenty hours now to, to go. Uh, well, you uh, two minutes. No, no. Two minutes. <laughs> uh, so good good for us that mm -hmm. there was no whiskey production during the biblical time because there's no regulations about whiskey production. Cool. Uh, so we can make whiskey. The yeah. only thing that uh, was made in the Bible is uh, alcohol from grapes. That means wine. So they have a lot of rules and regulations. It was as to made only by Jews and this and that. And mm -hmm. we were in a winery yesterday, and even me, we were we had to put our uh, hands in the pocket not to touch the casks. Uh, it's Christian. I'm Jewish, but I'm not Jewish enough for them. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> it's, um, I'm from Tel Aviv, you know, guys. It's uh, no, no, that's different, a whole different ball game. Yeah. But anyway, uh, for us, we don't work on weekends, which is. Shabbat, you know, Saturday. We don't work on Jewish holiday. And we are when we are using um, cask from grape-based products like wines, sherry, port, uh, cognac, those has to be kosher. 
So it's not a problem with wines here because we have a big wine uh, um, industry in Israel. Uh, port style from here. Sherry, we're going to talk about it in the next whiskey. And cognac, we just sourced cognac casks, kosher cognac casks from a producer called Godet in La Rochelle in uh, France. They have a kosher line. So it's great for us. Beautiful cask, by the way. Um, so this is it in a nutshell. Uh, if you have to let me go into a kosher thing, I really don't know. You know, I'm, I'm talking <laughs> <Okay>. a little <laughs> No, I was, just, I was just wondering if, uh, so there's, there's no rule regulation um, against alcohol uh, to be kosher. Uh, oh, fact, no, 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 it is, no. Uh, okay, it is, it is an added uh, certification, there are some, some, many times when you're out in the market, people come and ask you, who are very much into it, and say, is, does it have a kosher certified, certified whiskey, so it is just an addition, uh, not necessary to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a star here, yep. and this is and another one, so. So it's, it's, it's an added advantage which you can uh, do. But uh, I mean, for us, uh, not that it doesn't doesn't change anything. For us, it is more about maintaining the. Yeah, I mean, having it, it's the base is it's a world whiskey coming from mm -hmm. Israel, from Tel Aviv. Uh, there's an added advantage that we can certify it to sell. I think we have we have more uh, prices from the icons of whiskey than kosher certificate, so it's better for us. <laughs> yeah, cool. All right. Uh, so, but, uh, any comments about uh, this whiskey? I, I don't know. Yeah, uh, lots of people here saying um, that they, they 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 like it. So uh, Wim already said. I think you mentioned that how the wine is not dominating but adding to the whole. Um, Chris uh, senses a, a lovely dirtiness from the wine cask. Uh, I think I, I can follow what he what he's saying. So I like that one too. Um, so yeah, it's a. Uh, I like I like it too, and and it's it's good to taste it next to the classic. I think because if you don't. If you taste it just like that, you won't um, you won't feel it as much. Uh, what 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 the idea behind it is? And I think that if you feel oakiness, it's kind of a wine oak, mm -hmm. like you taste a Rioja, you know, Rioja wine, which is very oaky. But this is a it's a wine oak, and not a whiskey oak, because whiskey oak mm -hmm. kind of uh, influences differently. And yep. this is why we like it. It's a nice combination. So is it actually like a, a, a finish or a second maturation, or is it like a mix of uh, whiskeys aged on wine casks? And uh... it's, it's a mix it's of a... different whiskeys. Uh, so what we do is we still keep uh, fifty percent of the base recipe yeah. similar to the classic. That's why I said it's an element added. So you keep the fifty percent of the classic, and you add a different element to it, which is in this case it is a red wine cask. Uh, at the same time, I will also like to add that the next two whiskeys, which is if you know the lineup, if you have pre poured it is the element sherry and the element peated. Similar way, that is also 50% of the sherry element added to it. Okay. And in the peated case, it's a 50%. So it's a mix. It's added to it. So the whole idea, that's why I say, that's why I said it's element. It's an element added to the classic, mm -hmm. you know, shot. So we will add to it. And uh, it is good to see, actually, in a very, my way of doing it, how I did was when you try the classic, and that's why I said, do it next to each other, Try the red wine, then go back to classic before going mm -hmm. to the sherry, and then go back. Just switch on, going, keep going back to the classic, and see the same notes that you can see in all. Uh, Chris, I love your comments, really. Yeah, my wife don't see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, uh, uh, by the way, it's weekend and we are here. So, uh, it's weekend. yeah, <laughs> but you're not working actually. No, we have we have put down the curtains down so people don't know we are running. <laughs> well, you know people what? People won't ask for free drinks. Free drinks. Yeah. Uh, so as uh, as I said before, just to try the differences between the different casks, between these four whiskeys, uh, and I um, we, we did one blind tasting last night, so it's, uh, I like to do it that way. So see the differences on the nose mainly. Don't have to dive into the to sipping it. And by the time you see the differences between the classic and the three different elements that you have and see how it changes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you around the distillery so that Johnny talks about uh, the distillery in the same time. Mm -hmm. right now. And in the meantime, see the difference on the nose and see how it is. Yeah. And Johnny's gonna take you around. Is that a good, Johnny? Yeah, well, okay, cool. Yeah. So we can pour the number three is the sherry cask and number four is the peated. Uh, so uh, yes. we can pour those and just taste the four. And then we'll if talk have, about them. Uh, if, you have, if you have that many glasses in front of you, I'm sure you guys have. Everybody here is a professional, uh, Shilton. So they all exactly. have. Exactly. exactly. 
Uh, I don't have to. I don't have to tell that. Yeah. So that is the uh, the one after this uh, to try uh, will be the elements sharing and uh, and the one after that. So Johnny is there, as you can see. Hey, Johnny. Microphone. No. Microphone. No, Johnny. We don't hear you. He's connecting. Can okay. you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now we can. All right. Awesome. I just uh, I just made. Wanted to make sure I pass the door so you don't get the echo working. Um, all right, so we're gonna start with the meshing ton. Mm -hmm. This is the mesh ton, right? Uh, about 7,000 liters in capacity. We use about 1,000 uh, kilograms, one ton of barley for each mesh. In two cycles of water, uh, 4,000 liters of water to start with. And the second one is 2,000 liters. Uh, this is the mesh time. Yep. Meshing in is, uh, you know, general stuff, just uh, 64 degrees meshing. First water, second water, about uh, 90 degrees. Going from here is the fermentation area. We got the fermentation tanks. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, Washbacks, fermentation tanks, uh, varies between 9,000 and uh, 11,000 liters of uh, capacity. Um, fermentation time is 48 to uh, 96 hours, depending on the day, depending on the weekend, or is it during the week itself. Uh, we work uh, two shifts a day, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. And we don't do weekends. We only work uh, Sunday to Thursday. What else? And moving on, we have a wash steel. This uh, wash steel is uh, 9,000 liter in capacity wash steel. Uh, we believe it was first produced in uh, Spain for uh, um, grape distillation, but we bought it in Romania. And we are just about to renovate this uh, um, uh, Sorry. <laughs> Condensers. The condenser itself, the condenser is about to be renovated uh, just because we want to produce a more consistent product and without, in, without uh, regards to that, we got the uh, spear steel, which is uh, custom made from uh, cow steels in uh, Germany, 3,500 liters in capacity, uh, pot steel. Lean arm, 45 degrees ish, just like the wash steel. Uh, they work uh, all together. And we have the capacity to work the calm steel, which we usually do not use. We use it about maybe once a year just to, uh, just to uh, experiment and uh, try different stuff, try different distillate and uh, maybe New gene products, or maybe new risk products, or anything in between, just general experimentation. So, um, moving on to, by the way, gene production. This is our gene production. This cute little thing, uh, mm -hmm. 230 liter uh, alambic gene, uh, alambic, uh, sorry, still. Uh, what you see here is without the hand. Uh, the head and the lean arm are actually here. And, uh, and, uh, here. This is the head of the steel. And <laughs> this is the lean arm. So, after we have set in the and the 
ingredients of the gin. It's been sitting here for about 24 to 48 hours, depending on the recipe. Um, we start the distillation, and this, of course, sits there with a person that like, I'm holding it right now. We go past this thing arm, all the way down to the condenser, old school condenser, warm tubes of cold water inside of uh, just a bucket of water. And it comes out from this real thing, just pure alcohol uh, tuning for essence. So you will you will see some gin coming out uh, in, in your local market as well. Uh, soon, oh yeah, but that is that is on the way as yeah. we can see. But uh, oh. yeah, that goes here to, to. I mean, we will talk more about the stills as we go, as I go back. This, this is cask room number one. This is the second. Let me add it up for you. Got uh, someone of light inside. You can probably see just a tiny bit better. That's warehouse number one. This is cask room number one. Mostly private casks and some exceptional casks that are to be This is this is warehouse number two, which is locked at the moment. This is the lab where Tober works in. Mm -hmm. Where all the science is with what, what all the crazy ideas he comes up with. Oh, he got a key. Just okay. Just a quick sneak peek. You might so, catch some angels uh, having a sip now. The, the angels, the angels is one of them is holding a phone, the other and, and yeah, the other yeah. one is <laughs> That is <laughs> gas room number two. And gas room number three. Yeah, this is our uh, tasting area. As this well. is a yeah, tasting area for the visitor center, but I won't go in before we lose any network, maybe. Never know. Yeah. But yeah, here yeah. you go. Right. This is the distillery warehouses. We will talk about other warehouses as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so, well, Johnny, thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> I'll just so let's wait for them to come in. Um, yeah, and I hope you tasted the sherry. Tasted the sherry next to the. Um... Okay, uh, if you tasted the sherry next to mm -hmm. the red wine, uh, so it, another it's another element again foundation classic, and then we build. Um, Another 50%, which is made from 50% Oloroso and 50% Peaks. So yep. that means um, that we get the creaminess and a little bit of uh, funkiness from the Oloroso. And then you get the dark chocolate, cocoa, and of course, dried fruit, dried rich fruits from, from the pigs. Um, by the way, we talked about kosher. So because there's we, we need kosher wine casks and... Of course, we can't uh, produce sherry uh, in Israel. We were looking for a kosher sherry. Now there's none, because uh, mm -hmm. I think every old uh, uh, Jewish lady that dies, there's one less consumer. So I guess that uh, we needed to make our own sherry. So we did a joint venture between a rabbi from Barcelona. I'm not kidding. A rabbi from Barcelona. It sounds like a joke. <laughs> when I talk, a rabbi from Barcelona, uh, a winery down in southern Spain, Jerez, and a cooperage. Uh, okay. We make our own wines there, kosher wines, Pedro Jimenez, and also this year we're going to have some Palo Portado and Muscadel. Mm -hmm. And it, it's been aging in two sizes of casks, hogsheads, 250 liters, and sherry bats of 500 liters in Jerez for one year. Empty the cask, and the cask are coming back empty to Tel Aviv. Uh, so it started as a kosher thing, but the good thing about that that we can actually, we have our own seasoning project, like the big guys, you know. It's uh, very size, controllable, yeah. Uh, our size of the distilleries usually source cask from brokers, so you can never know who's the mother and the father uh, of this mm. cask. We know the quality of the wine, the quality of the cask, the maturation uh, period, um, and we know that the casks are beautiful. And I think that this whiskey, 
of course, it, again, it's balanced, like mm -hmm. whole, whole core range. It's not a very sherry, it's not a sherry bomb. No, not at uh, all. It's mm -hmm. like an old style sherry whiskey. Uh, when I used to like sherry whiskeys, it was because of this kind of style. Um, so uh, cheers again, 46 ABV, around five, uh, around four years, three and a half, four years. Are the, are the, are the wines uh, bottled too? Can you buy them and try them? Uh, we just actually talked to them because the, the Jews from Brooklyn asked us. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, no, no, I think that they're still Not yet, but something. in the future, maybe, yes. Uh, at the moment, no. Uh, but uh, I mean, the whole idea for that, guys, is that this is more about an easy entry level sherry whiskey. I would say, mm -hmm. or sherry whiskey. You know, it's not a big sherry bomb. But the thing is, one of the things we all are in the industry, we have been drinking whiskeys, uh, and then at the, when you say sherry, the first thing is that it, you, we expect a big sherry bomb. For me, mm -hmm. this is a good entry. Uh, if yeah. someone has not tried a sherry whiskey anytime before, I would say start here first. And of course, there's a long journey ahead. There are many, many sherry uh, whiskeys, uh, sherry wine cask. Um, sherry yeah, cask it's, it's really nice to use this next to the classic again to explain to people what, what a sherry cask is, what a sherry cask does to, uh, to a whiskey. So, uh, I think that's uh, that's really well, as as the chat is saying, very smooth, very balanced. It's just the way it. Uh, it's very nice to explain people what sherry does. I think. And I think it's an uh, when you taste the sherry, uh, the wine, and, and this one, you see the involvement of yeah. you know you get, of course, what the wine is giving you, what the sherry is giving you, and again, not overwhelming, not very wine, not over sherry, mm -hmm. and something something on a personal note what i would like to have a feedback is after you try one more of this as well the other element as well is that uh, whatever my uh, whatever i uh, you know I, I asked you guys to go back to the classic is that do you still find the classic beginning it is this the, uh, the classic as, as the base spirit and then uh, another element added to it uh, or i mean is it that you still find that oily nutty character and you add it i mean i do find it but I want mm -hmm. that it will be a good feedback for from you guys to us, because that is the idea. That is the whole idea of it of giving the base uh, as a backbone, and then you adding a different element to it. That is the whole idea of it. But let us know. I, mean, I can still find it in the in the sherry. I found mm -hmm. it in the red wine, uh, and probably the whole idea of the elements is that we have a whiskey for every palate, for everyone. You know, um, if, if the classic is supposed to be for everyone, you like it. No one not, doesn't like it. It's okay. Or if you don't like it, uh, but it's I think it has a very wide base of yeah. uh, of uh, you know conditions, and uh, here you can find what you like. Yeah. People are already complaining that the sample of the classic was not big enough to go back to it. And so next time I'll make it bigger, guys. No problem. Yeah. Um, don't go back. Don't go back. Let's go forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the maybe two two other questions here. Um, the barley that you use is that local locally sourced, or where does it come from? No, so we source uh, barley from uh, the UK. Uh, we have some experiments with local barley, but Israel is a hot country. Um, so we grow barley here, but it's uh, low on starch content. It's because uh, it's, again, again, from animal feed. So if it's low on starch content, it's very hard to, uh, to get sugar out of it. And it's very hard. We, when, we, when we did that, it's, it's kind of a thick um, layers. Yeah. And uh, it's almost broke the milk. And we have a very big milk. Um, so we have some, the branches that are not, uh, not that they're very, very hard. And of course it came with some stones and stuff, yeah. but, um, yeah. uh, so we did ha have some experiments. We are trying to cultivate a historical kind of, uh, you know, this place was the first place ever to, <coughs> to cultivate uh, barley and uh, wheat. Mm -hmm. So we are trying, trying to get this. Uh, so we source most of our cars, uh, most of our, uh, barley from the UK. From mountains, um, regular barley, which we use most beer, and peated barley, which we do every half a year. Now it's almost a month every half a year. Uh, peated weeks, peated week, peated month. Um, and we have another uh, another kind of barley from uh, the Czech Republic. Uh, very uh, peated, very interesting peated uh, Czech Republic uh, barley. So we play with those. Uh, we, as, as Johnny said, uh, we use two tons a day. Next year, maybe three tons a day. I don't think there's enough space in Israel to grow so much barley. Yeah. <laughs> well, also, also with the, with the, with the same peated whiskey, uh, the peated barley that you saw, we also, to make a peated whiskey, 
we get x either cask and one of that is uh, is the one we're going to try today so we mm -hmm. used x either cask as well uh the beaded uh element so yeah, number four yeah, whiskey number four whiskey number four is in a similar way keeping the base spirit keeping still keeping the classic spirit but adding an element now the peter element over here is a mix of both uh, yeah exila so, and so exila yeah. whiskey and peter uh, malt whiskey added together to the classic like that peter malt aged in ex bourbon cask and peter malt aged in exila cask okay all right the, the, what i found very interesting is when i tasted it i got a, a big chocolate hit actually from the peter one uh, I so, don't know where it comes from, if, but um, yeah. maybe it's it's reinforcing the the sherry cask that I had right before that. But maybe Chris, to answer the question, uh, it comes malted. Oh yeah, so uh, you buy the you buy it malted. Yeah, yeah. It, the Israeli one we malted uh, some, somehow on a on a grill. No, we don't. We have two casks. <laughs> yeah, uh, but anyway, um, so I guess if you look at the. This whiskey, the peated one, you when you nose it, it's not very peated. No. It's more, it's more earthy, it's more grassy. You get some of the grass that you get actually in the peat itself and the fresh peat. Mm -hmm. Um and then when you taste it, you're gonna have you're gonna have some, yeah, it is chocolatey. Mm. And you're gonna have some uh maritime sense and a little bit of uh sea sense and of course a little bit of smoky. So again, not a not a pit monster. It's uh, we call it the gateway for uh, for uh, peat expressions. If you didn't any, taste uh, any peat or you don't like smoky whiskies, this is a kind of a whiskey that uh, you can try mm. and try to open your world for that. And yeah. some of the some of the chocolate or the lactic uh, notes yeah. are coming from coming from the casks. Uh, um, some of the casks we're using are Ardbeck, and some of the casks are uh, Lafroy. And I think mm. that this uh, lactic is Ardbeck. Okay. I mean, I'm a big, I'm a big peat lover myself, and uh, you know, I, I love and, and a whiskey sucker and a whiskey sucker. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, recently. Yeah, for 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 those of you that don't follow Shilton on Facebook, uh, his new nickname is the whiskey sucker. So and please please please, please spread that around uh, as much as you can, everybody. Why? <laughs> <laughs> why did I suck? Why did I go to Israel? Why did I go to Israel <laughs> and I come back with a new name? Yeah. <laughs> well, you came yeah, from I'm... Shiltonator and now it's Whiskey Sucker. So. <laughs> Shiltonator was good enough. Was yeah. was good enough for me to yeah. to to come <laughs> real and then it's called a Whiskey Sucker. I have no idea what's coming. Judgment up. Day, the Whiskey Sucker. <laughs> <laughs> No, so uh, I'm I'm a big peat lover myself. I love peat whiskies. Uh, in my own dogs, I like the dirty the better for me as a personal taste. Mm -hmm. But this uh, the the thing is we have a we have a we have a thing uh, uh, as as someone who's very passionate about a particular gem, right? When I go in a bar and there is someone with me who is very new, who's not trying a peated whiskey, I try to sell him the most peated whiskey. As in, you should try that to try Octomore, for example, or try Lafroy. It's a good whiskey. There are many chances of that guy going out of the bar saying, I am never going to try, try a pizza whiskey ever again. Or never going to talk to you again. That's also Or never going to talk to me again. <laughs> yeah. I'm not friends or any whiskey, yeah. Or any whiskey anymore, yeah. yeah. So this is a perfect entry. And you will say, try it. See what you get. And for us, from our side of it, uh, as... as what we offer the world is that as a whiskey from Tel Aviv, Peter, this is where we start. You will see how it gets better or more intense mm. uh, because we have one of those in our lineup today, the single cask. But this was an entry of an offering which is for everyone, like mm. easy, medium, heated whiskey, not heavy beef. So uh, I love it. I love it. For, for, a, for a person like me, I don't know how, how many of you are, are big peat lovers, uh, lovers, but somebody like that, it's a nice summer drink. I can, I can, I can drink this. Also. Yeah. What, what, what I like is what I like especially about the first four whiskeys that we've tried now is that they're actually very educational. You can use them to uh, to get to teach people about this is this is like the classic is like the bourbon and then then you've got the sherry, and then you've got the red wine, and then you've got the peat. So you can you can actually educate people with this. So um, as somebody who gives a lot of tastings for beginners, uh, this is this is quite nice to to uh, to use, I think. So 
and they are all very nice whiskies. So, yeah. Yeah, cured salmon. Let's go for that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, we, we need some takeaway when you do that. <laughs> it's, no, it's it's very it's very I I, I get it. Uh, it's very barbecuey. Mm -hmm. It's very barbecue. You want to have a barbecue and have the frame. That's yeah. And we we have some. I don't think we're going to taste some of the elements uh, which are peated. So we had a peated STR. Uh, so yep. it was 100% peated barley, which was almost flinty, you know, like a mineral and flinty. And the second one was uh, uh, peated. Uh, now we just launched a peated port style casks, uh, which are great because the earthiness of the port and the sweetness. I, we really like um, very, uh, if, if you look at very heavily peated casks from us or a very heavy uh, uh, peated barley from us, the combination with wine cask or sweet wine cask are, are amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is stuff we're doing at the Apex series, but here at the uh, at the elements, as you saw that the house style, you can actually recognize it from the classic enough. So to, to make it easy, Jaron, I mean, we, we're talking about the peat level that we have, all right? I um, mean, you've seen it, it's not heavy peat, but then we, we, you will see some new releases coming out in the future, which will be like, if I say, I, I, I might, you know, you might come up and say Oloroso peat or a fortified wine peat. Mm. You'll see these names. When you hear these names, you will get an understanding that it is not heavy peat. You know, mm. we're not letting the peat taking over. We want to keep a balance of the peat and the cask implant in it so that you yep. enjoy both. It's not a big, uh, sharp peaty whiskey. So that is uh, I, why, I'm give, why I said this is that I, that is just a hint of the next effects coming in, the yeah. fortified one. So you know, yeah. there's less of coming up. So but actually you using the peat like, like seasoning almost. Yes. Uh, to to add to an influence, add to the other flavors uh, present, something like that. Is that in the Corrine? Core in the Corrine, I think that you get yeah. some you get some more smoky whiskies in uh, as as long as we go up. But mm -hmm. uh, we we'll talk about the, the Apex series in a second, and then you'll see what we do there. So this yeah. uh, until what we uh, tasted about uh, until now was the core range, which is consistent as as we said. We're thinking about a, a fourth element. Maybe mm -hmm. a port, so, uh, Israeli port or uh, SPR or something like that. But uh, core range, uh, big uh, big batches or almost consistent all the time. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, our uh, peak PPM level, 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 yeah, 40, 40 ppm, 40, 40 ppm, 40. but before this day, 40 ppm as the as the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because you get get quite a high cutoff point, actually, it's it's not that uh, that heavy uh, heavily. Yeah, but with with peated barley, we usually cut lower, a little bit lower. Okay. Yeah. 65. 65. 63, 65. Um, so we are switching on switching oh, on gears. Before, probably. Before, before we switch on gears. Okay. Before we switch on gears. I've got a thing. I know we, we always and, and I know how it works with you guys in Belgium. We have this pointing system, point rating system at the end, Jerome, where you put the uh, find out the best whiskey. I would really like to suggest and do and try and see if we can. Do that for the first four whiskeys and then do that at the end. If that's oh, yeah. possible, it's easy. I'll, yeah, I, I, I actually I made a poll and I usually don't ask for the best whiskey, but I oh. ask for the most favorite whiskey, which is kind of more honest, I think. Um, but uh, what I'll do is uh, while you're talking about the next whiskey, I'll just adjust it so people can vote more than once, and so they can vote for one of the first four and then for the for the total. Fantastic. Something like because that. Because competing, competing uh, that to the other whiskey is like picking up a club from championship and telling him to, to be playing in yeah. the championship. <laughs> which is like, okay. So yeah, the two different levels. It's, it's not, not the same, same target. Yeah, not the <laughs> the two different levels. Uh, one is uh, an, uh, our uh, entry into it. And now we are uh, getting into the two different ones. Uh, one thing very important is the next two whiskeys is the Apex series. And you can pour it. You can pour two in different glasses and 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 listen to the to the story as we tell and see the difference. The one we are going to try first is the pomegranate wine cask finish, which it sounds, sounds brilliant. brilliant. It sounds brilliant. I think sounds brilliant. Just the word I, itself. I, I don't have it with me at the moment, but then first I have to start my testing with showing people what a pomegranate fruit is and what it looks like. <laughs> It's a because granat apple in Flemish. Granat apple. apple yeah. Granat apple. Uh, I can tell you one thing. Um, we talked about the fast maturation. So this is one of the uh, DNAs of our distillery. Um, is, uh, Tel Aviv is very hot and very humid. So tonight, thank you for the beer, Johnny. Tonight is uh, 
probably a uh, cold night because it's still winter for us. So probably 10 degrees outside and it's kind of uh, dry. And again, summers 36 in average and can go up to 40 with 80, 90% humidity. That means that the fast maturation because the uh, differences between the humidity and the uh, dryness, the heat and the chilliness, uh, ABV goes up and down, the casks are spreading and shrinking, the liquid goes into the cask and, 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 uh, and I don't know, shrinking. So the whole thing uh, will make us a lot more uh, rapid maturation. We, we do a very rapid maturation, but we lose around 11% angel share a year in Tel Aviv. Wow. Um, Next whiskey, you're going to be even shocked, but uh, after this one. So we, it's a part of our DNA. Uh, that means that we can experiment a lot because we know what the casks are uh, developing, how the casks are developing after a few months. <coughs> and we need to check the, all, every cask very thoroughly, not you know, every five years. And, every and six months. Every six months. Uh, and even though we actually were looking for another, another uh, DNA uh, and... There is a winery in Israel that makes wines after pomegranates. Wow. Just like that. Uh, Shilton just were there yesterday, was there yesterday, and he was tasting some. And they're dry wines, half dry, semi dry, and fortified sweet wines, and even port style wine that are aged for 10 years and stuff like that. I'm not particularly crazy about the wines. They're very, very interesting, especially the port style. Mm -hmm. uh, but the casks are crazy. So we brought the cask. We said, OK, it's a marketing thing. Let's think about the Israeli DNA because we eat a lot of pomegranates. It's a part of a culture. Jewish New Year's, you have to eat pomegranates because uh, I think the blessing hey. is that your good deeds are going to be as much as those uh, grains the seeds. seeds inside okay. uh, for the year. It's very healthy. Um, it just had a pomegranate juice squeezed in all the Jerusalem. The old city on Jerusalem, like two days ago. So it's a lot. We, we see a lot of them. Now, those guys in the winery, they have their own uh, pomegranate variety. And they told us yesterday that it can go up to one and a half kilos, one pomegranate. Oh, wow. Um, so crazy, very high in anti antioxidant. And we put some whiskey into that one. And just were praying for that to be good. <laughs> After one year and four months, the boutique whiskey company bottled the first, <laughs> uh, the first um, boutique malt company because it was too young to be called a whiskey. Um, we just landed and bottled the third one. Probably on the, on next week is going to be on its way to Holland and Belgium, which is the first one that is fully matured. Uh, this one, which you are actually tasting, is. Uh, 59 is the batch number. I don't remember. Eight. eight? Batch number eight? It's uh, batch number eight, yeah. Eight, yeah. 59.5. 59.5. 59.5. Yeah. Batch number eight. 59.5 uh, was finished for over half a year. I think it was around eight months uh, in pomegranate wine cast, some sweet and some dry wines. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's a crazy whiskey. Yeah, just just so people know all the details because I know they want they'll want to know this. So this was distilled 25th of February 2018, bottled 11th of April 2021. So that's three years and two months uh, almost. Yeah. And so eight months of that was the finish in the pomegranate wine cask. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So now we've got all all also, the nerds are happy now. It is also a small batch. Uh, there are there are not many bottles out of those. You can see the number of the bottles of that. I don't remember. It was... 2,570. 2,570. Yes. Yeah. So that is a batch 8, uh, 2,570 bottles out. Uh, and when I say 2,570, it goes out globally. So it's yeah. gone out everywhere. Mm -hmm. Not many out there. Um, Half of it went to America. Went this out. is... Well, uh, to, to understand what is Apex series. Now, we said... We heard the name Apex. We tried the elements, right? We tried the classics. We tried the elements. Now we're moving to a name, new name for this apex. So what is apex? Apex is the level up from the elements. Apex are done in two ways. If you see an apex series at the moment, there will be some different single cask apex in the future. But at the moment, there are two different apex. One is the different wine cask that we use and we play around, we experiment around. And the other one is the terroir. Mm -hmm. Okay, the terroir will be the different location that it is matured in. 
So if we make sure that we are matured in is one of them will be the one next up of what we are going to try next. And different, uh, the five different climate zones, you'll find different whiskies. Mm -hmm. But this is pomegranate. There is a rum cask out in the market as well. There's a cognac cask, there's the white wine cask you would find uh, easily in Belgium. The different yep. wine cask apexes that we have tried uh, experimenting. And there will be different batches. There will be different batches of, of uh, pomegranate, for example. Which will all be slightly different. Slightly different. They will be all different. Maybe a different wine, uh, pomegranate wine uh, cask use, or maybe a longer maturation will be a longer. So it mm -hmm. will be, you know, at, at some point you want to try it out next to it. Uh, the whole idea for pomegranate is that since you know where you're coming from and you always bring the culture on the table and you say, this is our culture, that pomegranate wine cask will be the culture in the bottle. Yep. You know, yeah. Every culture in the bottle, this is pomegranate that we make and we bottle it. It's in your glass. Mm -hmm. When I tried the first time in the UK, I was like, wait, hold on. First of all, I know a pomegranate fruit. I have eaten that. What is a pomegranate wine? Mm -hmm. You know, I yeah. tried that. So that was where I started off. Yeah. And yesterday I visited the winery. I've seen it, I've tried it. They're a different style. And I was like, didn't know where to put my finger on which point do I like. I'm like, I like that, I like that. And it's like, they're okay, they're not great. But I can yeah, see they're, they're, because mind blowing, you know. Yeah, the mind blowing because you're yeah. surprised. You know, you're surprised. You are. You see something new. You're curious about it. You've had the curiosity for the last few months with you, and then you try it at some point. For mm -hmm. ending up trying it, there is a dry style wine, and there's a sweet yeah. as well as a dessert wine. So you can put your finger on it and say. And and I, I actually went to the winery with the with, with the whiskey as well. Yeah. Because and I and it was in one taste it next to it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So we're just keeping the whiskey in my glass and keeping the different wines. And every time I try the wine, I go back to the whiskey, go back to the wine just to try it. Uh, it sounds very alcoholic, but yeah, that's what I was doing. <laughs> no, you were you were working, Shilton, so that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that is what I will do with comparing it and putting out of different styles. And it is after 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 knowing the plans that we are coming up with in the future, uh, I can see where this is going. I can see where this is. Uh, again, well, just to, just to just to finish on the pomegranate, my my thing is uh, as you have seen the passion behind these guys, mm. and the guy who was on the video right now behind Johnny. It is it is uh, pomegranate wine will be the perfect wine with a perfect whiskey, which is passion and the culture in the gram. Yeah. You know? two, two, two things I wanted to ask you about that is uh, one is is pomegranate wine only made in Israel? Or are there other places where it's made? I, I have never heard of it before. I even uh, heard of this whiskey. So, uh... I think I think we're the only country that produces it. Um, yeah. Oh, of course. So this is a, a specific variety that grows on in Israel, but uh, I don't think that anyone else is making. No, I never heard of. It. I never heard of it. No, no, uh, no. I've never heard of it. Yeah. So that's that's cool in itself. Yeah. And then the and second thing was you, you've been talking about. Um, this is uh, this is the culture in a in a bottle. This is what Israel is about. I was actually wondering about what are the flavors of Israel. I don't know the the cuisine. I don't know the, what what uh, what what, uh, what you're about. So, are there other things uh, besides pomegranate wine and stuff like that? Yeah. Oh, um, wines are, are wines. So, uh, but we have a whole mixture of uh, flavor and tastes here. So uh, you can mm -hmm. find it in our gin, by the way, because the botanicals are local. Um, okay. But um, spices, uh, the, uh, spices, yeah, and stuff like that. So we, we are all a mix. We mm -hmm. all a mix. Uh, so our cuisine is crazy, and it's well, it's uh, Mediterranean. In Mediterranean, but with other influences, with some, with some uh, Asian and yeah, Arab, Arab influences probably from Arab all over the world. Yeah. But, but not only that. Just think about uh, you know my parents. My father came from the Ukraine. My mother from Bulgaria. My mm -hmm. wife's parents came from my father from Iraq, and her mother was born in Berlin. So just think about dinner in our place. Yeah. Uh, so we are all a mix. Johnny is partially uh, Persian and uh, Argentinian. So the, everything comes together. And I think that the new uh, cuisine in Israel, that the new chefs, they, you know, they, they went outside, they went to learn how to work as a good chef in the uh, mm -hmm. Blue, and then came and started to take all the influences and spices. Um, in whiskey, it's still, you know, we have the regulations and we have the restrictions to make whiskey. Uh, but we are, I think we're going to be the first probably to launch uh, orange wine uh, finish whiskey. Uh, oh, but cool. really proper orange wine, not with oranges, you know, white. No, 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 no. Yeah. 
Uh, and uh, and we have some other stuff here. The orange wine uh, mask that you want to use is again a part of the culture because if you walk on the street, you find sometimes there are points you see more oranges than than, than oh, anything yeah. else. Oh, yes. <laughs> growing. Yeah, we are, uh, and our gin is made with um, with with uh, Jaffa oranges now. We are we are in Jaffa at the moment now. Jaffa is a, is the southern part of Tel Aviv, the old city. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a lot of those and uh, no, there are lots of influences. Yeah, Jaffa, which people might know from Jaffa cakes. Jaffa cake, yeah, Jaffa yeah. cake because of the oranges. Yeah, but it's yeah, uh, yeah. because of the oranges, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, cool. so yeah, but I think that it in in one sentence to begin with the the epic series is so different than the core range, the you know the, mm -hmm. the consistent stuff. And Tomer and me, we call it uh, the never-ending coffee because we come up in the meet up in the morning here at the distillery. We have coffee, think about crazy stuff, never finish the coffee, and then go taste some cup <laughs> or think about that. Uh, and then the next it, day, yeah, the next day, it, just em em great. empty your cold coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Something, yeah. And uh, so I come up with some crazy ideas, and then uh, Johnny and Tomer had to make the whiskey out of that. And until now, they're making magic. So. Because I have crazy, crazy. Well, I think it's a very, very unusual trail. You've never tried it before, personally, you know, when, until I tried it. I was very happy and impressed with it. And when listening to the story and about the culture and everything, I can relate it so much. It's about, you know, uh, I can see a lot of passion behind that going in, in making it. And when you get it on the table, it is like, this is what we are. Mm -hmm. What we are, and there is a story there. So that's a lovely drink. Uh, um, by the way, Ari said Ari said that the pomegranate wine are popular in Armenia. I, I have thought in Georgia, Georgia, mm. uh, there are some about. Uh, I think our winery here, the making uh, before pre-COVID time, they were making uh, something like eight hundred thousand bottles and selling it mostly okay. in China and duty free. But uh, they're very good in, in our own uh, pomegranate variety. Yeah, it, it might way, be. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. By the way, the place that they grow the pomegranates, the winery, um, was covered with snow two weeks ago, and we were there yesterday. It was I don't know, 18, 20 degrees, <laughs> 18, 20 yeah. degrees, and this is was, this is winter, yeah. which was going right up, 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 and then uh, which we will touch base now about the different locations as well. Mm -hmm. the next ram. Um, yeah was me getting and, and and as we started the conversation today on, on zoom i was like i was getting i got jet lag already so we'll get to that uh mm -hmm. it's very tough you know very gentle uh, yes, <laughs> and i live in glasgow, not glasgow yeah. i don't see <laughs> <laughs> you're not his room no <laughs> I, I, just, um, so. I, I was just i was just wondering um because pomegranate wine to us in poor, cold Belgium and the Netherlands, this this sounds very exotic. But for you guys, this is very normal. So maybe for your local market, this is people don't really think this is um, weird or exotic. Uh, but for for us, it really is. So how how do the the how do you the Israeli people think about this this specific whiskey? Or so this is all, always small batches. We don't leave a lot mm. in Israel. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it, it is one of the best sellers uh, from the Apex series. It's not a cheap one. Uh, from the Apex series, everything we do with the uh, uh, with the pomegranates is from us. It's sold out in a second. Yeah. Um, and in Israel, I think they they like it. They like it very much because it's you know it's a kind of uh, our time, our thing. It's low. Yeah, it's your thing. Yeah, sure. I can totally relate to that. Yeah. That's that would be like a whiskey finished in a Geneva cask from for Belgium or something like that, or a beer cask I, I, or whatever. We have to try that as well. <laughs> yeah, we but we don't say no to any cast. So uh, yeah, we're go we're gonna have some uh, releases with uh, tequila, Calvados, uh, Amarone, uh, Ricciotto, um, Vermouth, and we don't say no. I probably forgot some. Uh, we don't say no to anything, and we have a gin that is aged in STR, and then we're taking the gin out, we bottle it, we age the whiskey again. So we're gonna mm -hmm. have a, a gin uh, finished whiskey, but. Um, I think that if, if I'm going back to the beginning of the distillery, when Dr. Gene Swan just came here, uh, and, you know, he's, he's a famous guy. He was the guy behind Kavalan, Amrut, uh, Kilhoman, Pederin, and some other, and uh, Knien now, a uh, very beautiful uh, distillery. And so when, when he came to Israel, and for him it was a small project, but we came to Israel, he fell in love uh, with the differences between... Uh, the climate zones, because Israel is a very small country, 
if you start your car in the morning in Tel Aviv, which is zero elevation, just next to the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean is just six minutes walk from here, um, hot and humid, and then you go, like we said, one hour, with, with it's no traffic jam, is even 45 minutes, up in uh, 750 to 900 meters above sea level in the city of Jerusalem. Uh, you know, Jerusalem and Tel Aviv are different. We say it's 45 minutes and 3,000 ways uh, from us. Uh, years, 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 so, years, so, years back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 45 minutes and 3,000 3, meters away oh, from wait. us. Um, and, um, and then it's dry, uh, very cold. Uh, it was snowing there. Uh, two weeks ago, when here it was raining, uh, mm -hmm. but very hot, uh, very hot uh, days in the uh, during the summer, but very cold nights during the summer as well. Winters are cold, and then after one after one hour, you're going to be minus 438 meters below sea level. Yesterday we've been to almost a thousand meters height at the Upper Galilee. And then we went down to the Sea of Galilee because Jesus, uh, Jesus, of God, Shinto wanted to walk on water. And Jesus. Jesus, he wanted to walk on water. Uh, so he tried to. I, I, I think we should have drunk some more, and he was walking on water. Uh, so Sea of Galilee is minus two hundred meters below sea level, but very humid. Yeah. But the lowest place on Earth is um, the Dead Sea, minus three hundred and twenty-eight meters below sea level, mm -hmm. and we aged some casks there. Uh, and I think that. Again, we won best in category two <clears throat> yesterday uh, from uh, another age small batch whiskeys, uh, single malt whiskeys, uh, best in category for the World Whiskey Awards. And with, with with this Dead Sea, with this uh, or... the Dead Sea. So yeah, yeah, with this this one, uh, yeah. we ate cask on a roof of a hotel. Eighteen months. Eighteen months, and then another eighteen months in Tel Aviv, or we start in Tel Aviv, and then. We, we get it back just right here. Yeah, right here. Months right there in that sea, and eighteen months. Good. Uh, Why? Because yeah, no, I, I can tell you this yeah. one for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that is one thing I will never forget. Uh, never forget. Um, the greedy angel whom you seen sucking yesterday has got a twenty-five percent share. In uh, that sea. Yeah, yeah. Jewish angels are very special. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so 25 percent angel share there uh, at, uh, at at the Dead Sea, so you can't. And especially, I, I I think you know what I was having a chat with Tomar yesterday. The pressure makes a lot of difference in that. Mm -hmm. The it's, pressure makes a lot of makes difference. everything. I I went dumb. Yeah, I mean I went dumb. You know, I I mean I I could not hear anything. My nose started uh, hurting, uh, and I was telling the guys, and I he was like. It's normal. There's nothing unusual. I'm like, it is normal for you. You didn't have a beer. You didn't have a beer. See, see that's the excuse. Like, you didn't have a beer. You go up mm. and you go down. And like, okay, I could feel, I could feel it, and I can imagine the cask, the pressure building in as well. Uh, on uh, over there, it is about 50 degrees Celsius, and you're measuring the whiskey at that. You can't leave it there. No, mm. uh, you can't leave the whiskey there. The time that whiskey is sitting on the cage, right on top of the hotel roof. I did. Uh, we, we couldn't get the lynch in because there was like the cage. The cage. So mm -hmm. Shilton went up to the cage, put the lynch, and then sucking it. This is why we call it the whiskey sucking. Yeah. Check out this Facebook page. It's, this, these are brilliant photos. Yeah. <laughs> so that is the story. But uh, as, as we said at the beginning, the apex goes into different, uh, we have got five different climate zones. And the plan is to, uh, to mature whiskey in different climate zones because we have the flexibility of playing around with it. Mm -hmm. uh, of you know, maturing it. I mean, uh, you will see, uh, on, for example, if you say Scotland as a region, or not even not, not to go far away where I was before in, in the coastal hot and humid climate. So you get that particular climate. Here, you have the flexibility of five different climate zones. Mm -hmm. So you can, and you can play around and make good use of it. And that is exactly what is happening of, of, of uh, playing around and trying different uh, different. So this is the first one. It's the first release of the Dead Sea. Yes, that's no, the second one. No, I mean this is the second. One. No, batch, which batch is that? Batch ten. Batch, batch ten. Batch ten. Batch, batch, ten. batch, batch yeah. ten. Oh yeah, the first one. Yeah, it's the first one. It's a batch ten. Six point two. Yeah. This is uh, the, the the first. Uh, if I had to do it blind, Sharon, I will say if I had to do it blind tasting, 
my best way of putting it across is uh, not mentioning what it is, just putting it next to a very old age Scotch whiskey. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just put it yeah. next to it. Let people try it and think what you think. Because you get that one and a half, 18 months of big pressure, higher maturation with that heat, and then you get it back here in Tel Aviv, which is which will come, which is calmer, but it will let the flavors marry. Yeah. It is not as cold as Scotland. It will have been better. <laughs> you know, it will have been different as Scotland or Belgium, but it makes a lot of difference. I think that um, not only the air pressure, the minerals in the air, you know, yeah. that tea product, uh, it's not very salty. Maybe you get a little bit of salty scent, but mm. not very salty, but you get a lot of minerals in the air, rum, sulfate, all kinds of, and they're probably going into the cask because the cask are almost falling apart. Uh, you saw the cask yesterday, uh, two days ago. Was, I, don't, I don't know how we can take it off, but uh, it's almost breaking because of the sun. It's outside, it's outdoors. If you, uh, when you told me to open the cask, yeah. I was scared. Yeah. I don't want it to just break off. I was that scared. I don't know why, but because it, the, it, was, it was dried off. You know? You're easily scared. <laughs> Not after. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a, for us, it was a surprise because, again, it started as a marketing idea. Let's do the, mm-hmm. you know, the most extreme climate we can have, uh, the lowest place in the world. And, uh, and then when we did the blend at the end with, with Tomer and, of course, Johnny, we sent the first few bottles for uh, without even a label. We didn't have a label to uh, some uh, competitions. We we won double gold in San Francisco, grand gold, gold in Frankfurt, and uh, World Whiskey Awards. Uh, and and it, it's crazy. And the most for me, uh, what something that was really noted was uh, when we were in the London Whiskey Show this year. We we had some blind tasting for people, and they thought it's an 18 year old single malt scotch. And this is a uh, three year old whiskey. I, I put up yeah. a photo. I didn't even join you guys. Yeah. I, I, I put up a photo, and then people, we were not, there was no plans of, of me getting into MH yeah. or working. But that was my whiskey of the year as well. And I, I told you that I put, took a photo as well. It was a, one of the best brands. And Mark from uh, Glen Phillips. Glen Phillips. Mark from Glen Phillips. You know, I, I'm taking from the whole whiskey show, I'm taking two whiskeys. One is a 25-year-old Springbank, and the other one is a three-year-old from the desert. So uh, I, I think we did something good here. So there will, there will be more. There will be more yeah. coming in from different locations. You'll see something which in the future you'll say Apex from maybe Jerusalem or yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Sea of Galilee and, and some from the desert. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so we will see that. That is, and, but there was a, this was a, this was an initiative, and it's uh, the first one we used the terroir concept on it. That one, mm-hmm. of all, one of the other differences in the terroir, uh, which we start with the Dead Sea, and we're going to have some others, is that it doesn't, it's not based on one type of cut, not like, uh, I don't know, Peter uh, STR, pomegranate, because because of the experiments, you know, every one of those small warehouses there, we have a bunch, and oh, some yeah. are not, I think that Exila are not acting very nice in the well, By the way, we, we tasted the good one, uh, but... Uh, so the first, the, this whiskey that you're tasting is more about the wow, but it's mostly ex bourbon STR and some red wine casks. So more like the classic, basically. That. Uh, but with a red wine cask. With a little bit of red wine, yeah. Uh, no, no virgin oak there. Virgin oak is okay. going to be wow, like like a soy sauce. It's going to be black. Yeah, virgin uh, oak in that climate. Yeah, I, uh, I can imagine. Yeah. Uh, so no, no, we not do that. We don't do that. And the next one, the next batch from Desi is going to contain. Kind of the same cask with an addition of X Rye cask. Uh, okay. So very, very interesting. And we're going to play with that. We're going to continue playing all the time. And uh, this is the fun thing about the coffee, coffee morning talk, the never ending morning talk. <laughs> was it good? Or it's was really it? good. And, and it's, it's, it's actually, I, I totally get that um, it's, it's, uh, it tastes a lot older than it is. Um, it, it's, it's so, yeah, balanced, subtle. I don't know how, how to how to explain to express it, but it's very um, yeah. You 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 should put this in blind tastings for people. I think if you put this in a blind tasting uh, in, uh, in in Apex, uh, I mean the Dead Sea, putting in a blind tasting in the next one age, uh, with yeah, it will be a game changer. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the pomegranate is eye opener mm-hmm. for me. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And then you see the, the elements ones which are in their own category, but this mm -hmm. will be going one level up. Uh, you will see, uh, you also have the connect cask in uh, available out. We have, you have the white wine cask out in the market. You will see yep. a lot. White wine was the first one we launched. It was fully matured in a traditional Chardonnay with uh, Sully and everything. Uh, so not a lot of uh, fully matured uh, Chardonnay cask. Um, cool. That was yeah. the Apex series. We will, in the future, we'll also come with the Apex series uh, distillery edition. But the next RAM that you have in a single cast. Apex single cast. Apex single cast. Yeah. Apex single cast. Mm. The next RAM that you have is exclusively bottled for Belgium. Belgium. Test yeah, that, is, that is the first thing I decided when I, when I joined. I said there's a lot more interesting stuff coming up in Belgium, John. You know that. <laughs> That's pretty good, that's... Chilton. Thank you for that already. <laughs> uh, so, by the way, someone asked, uh, what's our biggest market is America? Because it's big. Uh, yeah. And then I think Germany. I think Germany is big. Uh, Holland and uh, Benelux, we, we take it as one. Uh, Benelux is doing good. And you know, they're our first. And uh, mm -hmm. we're working through um, Bresser and Timur in Holland. And yeah. with Loco, Bresser and Timur is like a family to us. Because it, we, we always do first thing with them. Uh, but in Glasgow, again, uh, no, Glasgow. no. <laughs> <laughs> just it's, uh, just um, we are distributing the, now, I think, yeah. in 30 markets outside Israel at the moment. So, okay, uh, yeah, we're growing. This is why we took this guy. So, uh, yeah, 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 you like him, don't like him. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're, you're saying something. Yeah, and it, there's another question here about the newsletter. The, uh, somebody is trying to subscribe, but he keeps getting some problem. Please insert valid email. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. Uh, if we have do, 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 a, do a thing, uh, Jaron. If, if, who is that? Is it? It's Jan. Just, Jan. just uh, share my email address with them, and I'll yeah, get I'll just yeah. Or, or Jan, just send me an email, and I'll send it to Shilt and something like that. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll work yeah. it out. Yeah. Work it out. I'll just share my email address. For it. Everybody can do that. So I'll I'll just pass on all the emails to uh, to Shilt. If you have any further <laughs> questions coming up as well, and, and anything that yeah. uh, you have, and just let us know. Just let us know. We can send it to Jaron and we'll uh, answer it as well. Um, cool. That, that whiskey is a single cask exclusively bottled for Belgium. Yeah. And yes, as you can that see. Is. 267 and bottles. 267 bottles, 55 points. What it's a 55.5, 555. Yeah, 55. yeah. yeah. it's um, a cask number 0650, XI Lacoste. Uh, two years old and a bit. Um, I think it's uh, three years I, I and three months exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, we, when we do that That's single cast, we, yeah. Uh, just take it. So Johnny is pouring us some. Johnny, come, come, Johnny, come, 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 run, yeah. come and join us. So what we do is uh, we we send everything we have, and then um, we totally forget about those casts. And when I was in in Belgium in beginning of October, I think, or the end of the uh, September. Before was... the pandemic. No, no, uh, another pandemic. So, so yeah, just long... <laughs> between Whiskey Live Paris and Whiskey Show London, I came for two days. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, Stefan from, from uh, Sinoka took me to Jorgen. What's, uh, what's the name of the... Uh, Jorgen's Whiskey House. Yeah, in Zottegem. Yeah. yeah, so we, we did a we did a masterclass there. I I, I I say this with the big organ. The big organ. The yeah. big organ. The big the big the big organ. Yeah. Big organ. That makes <laughs> it easy. Yeah. Big organ. Yeah. So big organ, and I I tasted this cask at the end of the, the tasting because we were tasting this one, and I totally forgot how good was this whiskey. So this is mm. um, non pitted non pitted barley, hundred percent non pitted barley in an I think it was a Lafroy cask, but I don't remember. Um, and you get, because the Freudian Arbecs are, are not the same for us as cask. Uh, and I say Ar Arbeg are more lactic. Yeah. And uh, the Freud are more, more, a little bit more smoky, but more grassy. And yeah. I think that this one is. More of an iodine. Iodine, yeah. Uh, this is my drink. Hmm? This is my, my style. My, my style. Uh, so it was a, a very good drum. It was uh, only bottled for uh, Belgium. I think we have 
one more coming on uh, and another Father's Day uh, that we talked before that, which yep. I don't really work with it now, but uh, I'm going to check tomorrow. Uh, so anyway, I think uh, we, we, love to, we love to do a lot of uh, single cups for you guys because uh, I think Belgium is a beautiful market for that. And of course, now you have uh, the whiskey sucker with you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the shiltonator. <laughs> the shiltonator. <laughs> or Jesus, as we also uh, sometimes yeah, say. Jesus, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jesus from Goa. I mean, this is this is my brand. You get you get a lot more bourbony. It's not yeah. your. It's not your. It's, it doesn't let the um, exile cast take over. Doesn't let it take over. You know, it's there. Mm -hmm. It's not taking over. Of course, because it's an ex exile cask, so mm -hmm. there are not many. But wow. it is. It gives the right balance on it. It's also qu quite fiery, I find. It's, it's yeah. quite. Uh, it gives you a lot of warmth. You can. You can. Especially with this weather, yes, I know it's windy in, in the UK today uh, in Glasgow. Mm. It's very windy with the storm, but I can see myself having it over there. Uh, here, I'm not sure. Mm. I want to have it straight away. I might add a cup of water to it, but uh, it's a lovely drink. Well, it's drinkable for a oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. For that ABV, it is drinkable. Oh, it's 55. <coughs> yeah, the, the, <laughs> the two the two apexes were higher in in, in ABV, so. Uh... The first Apex we ever buy. launched. Is, that, is, it, is this is this whiskey? Is this whiskey older than you, or are you older than the whiskey? This is older than me, but I'm I'm getting there. Um, <laughs> but um, I think I think the, the uh, but I I distilled Bushman when it just opened it. Uh, so Sixteen oh eight, yeah. Um, anyway, I think that um, the first ever. Uh, batch of apex the, the first apex was the, the the white wine and we bottled it as we liked it at 61.2 mm -hmm. and I, I know that it so it was a beautiful whiskey but not a it was kind of i think too harsh for for people and and then we had another one but i think our sweet spot is between 55 and 57.5 mm -hmm. something it depends on the cost this is yeah. this is a lovely dram and 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 understanding uh, there are only two hundred sixty seven bottles of that. Uh, there is a bottle which I bought before trying it, right? There's a bottle which is which I bought which uh, came from Belgium. Mm -hmm. It is in Scotland, but in Edinburgh, <laughs> with somebody's house. I have to go and pick it up or maybe sort it out. But it is there already because before trying it, like, when it said ex Hila, I said. Mm -hmm. I said mm -hmm. that. <laughs> Actually, it's with her. So I will, I will. It's with her. So I'm gonna go and pick it up. Uh, I think it's she's gonna kill you. We're, we're just sending there, sending her some uh, photos from Tel Aviv, from the beach, from that, and, and she's so cold in Edinburgh. I can sit this all day with on the nose, yeah. just nosing yeah, yeah. it. But you, you can send what I'm talking about: sweetness and grassiness, and then you get the uh, the power oh. of the beach. People in the chat are agreeing. I mean, uh, top, great malt. This is great stuff. Splendid. I mean, I mean, I can have a chat with somebody for thirty minutes, still not having the first sip. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Closing it. That's yeah. that's the closing it. Yeah. yeah, and the crazy stuff you know, that's talking about anything. It's hundred percent non-peated barley. Yeah, but yeah, and and for for uh, for the distilleries in you know the island distilleries in Scotland, those casks are exhausted. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything to do with that, but because of our climate, we saw so much power from that, so much taste from that, yeah, and the high cut. Yeah. yeah, very nice stuff. This. Yeah, well, there are not many two six seven. Yeah, uh, two, two six seven. It's actually, not high price as well. Is it? Is it about eighty or ninety price? In, in, in uh, it's it's ninety nine. Um, well. For people who want uh, just um, who want to order a bottle on our website, you can order uh, these bottles uh, at the moment. So just go to the page for the tasting, and you can see you can okay. order these bottles. Uh, and it's about uh, 99 euros. Um, I think we, we priced it at. I'm not sure yet, but uh, I'll I'll share the link in the chat uh, further on. So no obligation, of course, because everybody here knows. Uh, at least my my uh, my my audience knows. I'm not a shop, but uh, I'd like to, uh, as a service, you can order these bottles if you want to. Um, otherwise, just go to your local uh, liquor store and we, order them we there. Are, we are distributed. Uh, Let's take so, it, guys. Uh, Johnny is doing a selfie. Cheers. 
<laughs> so we are we are distributed in, in Belgium or yeah. so through Synaco. And uh, there is lots more coming up. There are so many things uh, flying uh, lined up, uh, especially for Belgium. I can I can get into that. <laughs> uh, knowing, knowing, the, knowing, knowing, knowing it, knowing the industry, but there are so many things coming up for sure. Yep. And uh, we're looking forward to come and see and 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 do more tastings in person in this year. So definitely. I, I think um, just watching the last six months to a year, um, there was a lot of buzz about uh, milk and honey distillery in Belgium. There was a lot going on. There was some tastings going on. You guys did some online tastings. Uh, and lots of people are talking about it now. So I guess that's that's what you were planning and hoping to do uh, from the start on, uh, of course. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, that brings me to maybe um, slowly finishing up uh, or, or st stopping the tasting. Um, some final questions like what what, uh, what does the future hold for uh, Milk and Honey Distillery uh, uh, for Belgium, but also just as a, in, in general, what uh, what are the plans? Well, there are, there, as, as we said, uh, as we said, there are a lot of experiments that we're doing. So you find a lot of different tasks and different uh, projects. There is one thing which I can I, I can see with this with, with, with this team is that there are two things. One is passion. The other is a risk takers. Mm -hmm. they, they risk it. They try that it's risky. And and I mean, I'm talking about Tomor and 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 Jonathan and Tal and trying it out. They risk it. They try it. If they are, if they are kind of, you know, whatever they see, they, they try it in a cask and they say, how is it going? Okay, do we bottle it? If we don't bottle it, what do we do? We drink it. That's what they do. So there is a... So they keep the best stuff for themselves. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I had a cask that I fell in love with. And yeah. then I sent some samples to an independent bottle, to my, my partner in, uh, in America, our distributor in America. Which is he has his own like independent bottling, Impex collection, and he said it wasn't good like the first uh, the first one he bottled the two and and he got me going you know he got me so I sent him the sample from the cask I like and he took it uh, oh. so no no a note for myself don't do, and and Shilton was to still one cask I was looking at you with that <laughs> anger you said that I was going to come I was looking at him with the anger because I found my best cask at the distillery I'm like can I buy it. Away, or no, it's, it's going to be a black bottle. Uh, so see? yeah, it's uh, no, not for you, but uh, yeah. it's uh, about Shilton picked one that uh, we we fell in love with, and it's a uh, it's a ruby port uh, okay. ruby port uh, cask, and it's going to be bottled at the uh, Apex Single Cask Series, which are coming in a, in black bottles. Uh, so uh, because, right. because of him, because uh, the dark uh, skin color. Because oh, of him. <laughs> But you lost some. No, we well, have some uh, your color uh, with the Gen C. To, to finish up the sentence, uh, to, to finish up the question, Jaron, uh, there is a future. Yes, there are so many different projects coming up. But uh, first, uh, but also at the same time, getting the word out and get, and focusing on the classic and the elements, because that is the core range and that is the the the, the backbone. The and, you know, that is, uh, if if you, if you had to ask me about what is a whiskey from Tel Aviv, or or how is your whiskey different than any, any other whiskey, I will for the classic or the elements. Um, that will be my whiskey. Yes. What do you What do you do best, Shilton? I would say, okay, I have the FX and the, and and the Dead Sea, which is my next card which I play. But the card will be to show and introduce. How do I introduce somebody to a whiskey from Tel Aviv? Will yep. be the classic element. So that is the that is the focus. But on the future wise, uh, my my answer to that uh, is we have got whiskey maturing over here. We got whiskey maturing at the Dead Sea, and there are more warehouses. We Mount might as Jerusalem. Main to Mount of Jerusalem and imagining that, uh, that uh, I mean, remembering that our angel share is at 11%. I prefer that we drink the whiskey rather than giving it to the angels. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, there's enough liquid for us to drink yeah. uh, but, or be sucking it. So let's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think I think you should make a make a make a make a tourist thing about it and you just book a sucking trip, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> a trip yeah, yeah. Oh, sucking trip, a, a yeah. trip where you suck. Yeah, yeah. Oh, just, no, but, but suck, uh, didn't only suck, he, he was twisting, banging, and sucking. That's too many yeah. people yeah. on a zoom. Yeah. Yeah. You know how you open a cast, you twist it. <laughs> 
Um, I can tell you one thing, commercial-wise, um, mm. I think um, Belgium started uh, for us. Mm. Of course, we started to work uh, with uh, Sinoco through Bresser and Timmer like uh, three years ago, almost mm -hmm. four years ago. But I think in the last 16 months or a year and a half or two years, we have a very good connection with the guys here in Sinoco. I, I had a little market visit there. I had Oded, one of the, the colleagues that works with me and Chilton at the, uh, at the export. Uh, he was in Ghent. He was in Spirit in the Sky. He had some, uh, some uh, uh, master classes and some uh, market tours. In, in. So I know that Belgium is a focus for us this year. Mm -hmm. And of course, Chilton um, uh, loves, loves Belgium. Um, I hope that you like him too. Uh, now with yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this is whiskey, okay, not a shillinator. As long as it's for just a short time, a couple of days, it's okay. So. <laughs> I, I know, I know. Two <laughs> days, that's it, maximum. <laughs> no, he's the, he's, the, he's the guest that don't leave, you know. Is, uh, yeah. you, know you know, the only thing that they are afraid of is that I might get into Belgium and finish the beers for them. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> we, we had some sour beer tasting on uh, Wednesday. I still have my... Um, my my ears. Just, my, 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 but before yeah. before before we go off, uh, if you want to wind up with the, I, I will let you do the honors, uh, Carol. So that then we can have a chat. And Chris, yeah, by the know. way, the Apex Cruise Port is fully matured in Robin Port, not finished. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just just uh, when we're when we're uh, just the last couple of minutes, I'll launch that poll about the favorite whiskey of the night. So everybody, yeah. you can you can vote whatever your favorite was, and you can vote. One of the four first ones, and then uh, oh, maybe the, the three last ones, so we can uh, we can see. You can vote multiple times. We'll see. The, the poll has started, and we'll uh, we'll just no, keep on chatting a little bit. I think yeah. I think you guys uh, can can see while they're yeah. voting, but no, no, not not everybody can see that. So this is this is a. Uh, I'll share that when everybody's voted, but okay. we as hosts can see it already. What uh, what the voting is uh, going on. Wow. So uh, one of the questions here was, uh, are you coming to Brussels in November, Shilton? Yeah. For Spirits in the Sky? Uh... Spirits in the Sky? Yeah. No, I'm coming, yes. <laughs> when, I was, when I was asked about Spirits in the Sky, that is, uh, that is religion for me. I can't miss it. <laughs> I have to go to Spirits in the Sky. Mm -hmm. and people, we all know that. We, we have... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no, but any, anyway, uh, if, if you're uh, before that, if you're in Belgium, uh, always happy to uh, to support and uh, I'll, I'll share everything uh, you guys are putting out because uh, I I, uh, I really like the stuff. I, I, as I said before, we uh, started tasting. I waited to taste all of these whiskeys uh, together with you. So this was my first uh, my first time tasting these and I, I really enjoyed this. So uh, I think... Uh, Everybody in the in the in the in the audience has to. If there's any last questions anybody wants to ask, this is the time because in a couple of minutes we'll be uh, we'll be closing the official part of the tasting. As most members of the audience know, there's an after tasting uh, that that will last for a couple uh, <laughs> for a bit longer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> our record uh, guys is about three o'clock in the morning for the after tasting. So. Um, oh wow. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know if we're, if we're going to make that tonight, but. Uh, uh, so, is this any more questions? Just you mean, if you see me with the phone on the beach and still joining you, then it is fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, just just to end up, uh, I've, my questions to you guys. I've got questions for you. Uh, is that do you still see how it is changed? The last time for me it was like I can sit with that, and it is changing still, right? The last time I can see the change in it, uh, but. Uh, the whole idea of that was to have the four different elements first of making the whiskey for everyone. Uh, going from basic, classic, straight table whiskey to the red wine, mm -hmm. different, more, more uh, culture, Israeli, and then getting the cherry addition to that and going to pick it as a whiskey for everyone. And then you go in the, in a bit level up um, to the FX, which is again, culture, pomegranate, oh, the terroir, that, and and I'm glad that we picked up this two in the era. Uh, thank you so much mm -hmm. for picking up this two because these are these are two main focuses. Mm -hmm. yep. There one and the different cast and and pomegranate was a perfect uh, showcase. So it's a perfect. There uh, there are cognac casks, there are rum casks out in the market as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, cask, if you get your hands on the cognac cask, we don't have that uh, anymore. Um, 
I think there's what, a couple uh, more left at Sinoco. I'll, I'll have to check with Stefan, but uh, I think they have, they have some. Uh, BSOP and, uh, and Exo Godet uh, from La Rochelle. Beautiful. Really, it's, uh, it was a beautiful whiskey. I'll uh, share the results from the from the polling and uh, you should be seeing that on the screen, everybody now. What I oh, yeah. always like about these polls, if everything gets votes and if the, the voting is very spread out, mm -hmm. I think that's a sign that the, that the tasting was very good. Um, uh, so, yeah, I don't know if this is what you guys expected okay. from the voting, uh, Tal. Well, I, ex I expected, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know where this was going on the face profile and the palette. I know what you guys love anyway. So I know yeah. what this was going, where this was going. Yeah. Uh, but did you expect that? No, Johnny. No, no, I actually did not expect that. Uh, the Peter Bree surprised me. I expected for the Sherry to... to but it depends on the plot. No, no, no. What did you think so? Do you tell the sherry? My favorite one. Well, no, favorite? no. What did you think would have been the favorite? The sherry. I thought would be the sherry would be the the. Usually, it's the most plot pleaser. You know, yeah. it is. The, it is. I mean, every every we did a testing yesterday. It is, it's similar. It's just just because it is balanced towards the sweet. But I think this. The, the, of, this uh, I think. The flavor. But I think this plot is more no. Educated. It's it's not that it's not yeah, it's, it's it's where they are from. Okay, <laughs> it's where it is coming from. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking, we're talking to, I was doing we were doing a tasting yesterday with the Swedish guys, you yeah. know, and it was some uh, uh, fortified wine pizza or something like that, and and the, and the pomegranate. So it all changes with where you are and what your palate is. Mm -hmm. Yes, which is very important. So that goes back to the question saying if we are picking the single class for Belgium, you know what yeah. we are picking up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Peter did, did, did. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Great. Uh, but you great, great result. Great, so. All right. Because yeah. this is a good this is a good single class. I yeah. want to sit with this, I know. I love it. All right, guys, I think um, we're going to officially end the tasting, at, at least the recording, uh, for that. So um from my uh, from my end, I'm going to thank you guys for uh, taking the time to host this tasting for us. Uh, uh, that was a, it was a real eye-opener, I think, for, for a lot of people. Whiskey from Israel, who would have thought? Eh? <laughs> but um, we did. We did. great, we did. We did. great yeah. stuff. We had a lot of, I had a lot of fun talking to you guys. I think everybody had. Uh, so thank you and hope to see you live somewhere soon. And uh, guys, come to Tel Aviv. Yeah. yeah. Cool Definitely. city. Beach, uh, don't 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 believe Shilton. He is suffering every every second of that. <laughs> but uh, come to Tel Aviv, come and visit us, and we'll be happy to meet you. Um, we we'll probably I'll be probably in Belgium uh, one time this year. Shilton is going to come along uh, mo much more mid than me. Uh, but come to Tel Aviv, visit us, and enjoy milk and honey. And thank you so much for having us. Thank you for your appreciation. And uh, cheers, Lechaim, Lechaim, Lechaim. Bye-bye. <laughs>